Um, I see it taking a different image than lately. Kind of more skateboard influence. People are going to start doing some shit. I think for sure that people were milking snowboarding because snowboarding's fucking easy and they were making money off of nothing, doing nothing. And I think it was starting to show. And those people that got cut from that shouldn't have been making money anyway, you know? <laughs> My main influence in, in snowboarding was probably Mike Ranquit. Um, I met Mike. Once I met Mike, we, we had the same kind of backgrounds and we, you know, felt the same way about snowboarding. We didn't take it as seriously as a lot of the other people did. We didn't care about contests. We just felt like, I guess, skateboarding on the snow, you know. We weren't, you know, trying to win everything or whatnot. And Mike just ripped. To this day, I think Mike's one of the best you know, snowboarders out there. He just does so many great things. God, I think I met Roach in Colorado on some Sims trip and we just hit it off. We were like two peas in a pod. We had like the same uh, ideals of snowboarding, you know, like when you go to, you know, Europe in 1989 and you're the only person in soft boots, like me and Craig Kelly and Palmer and, you know, a couple other guys, like we we're the only people in soft boots. Everyone was like in ski boots, you know what I mean? And, you know, meeting Roach was like a breath of fresh air because it was like he <laughs> dressed proper, you know, like and he had he was concerned with style. And, you know, whereas other people were just wanted to like do method errors and get their arm up like that and stuff like that. We wanted to like, you know, grab the board behind your foot or right in front of your foot, you know, and like not gay it out, you know. <laughs> We went to a, a, a Sims camp together, I think, and everybody was training or something. And me and, and uh, Mikey were just like, dude, we could do calves. We can go switch and do switch tricks. And I remember, you know, talking with Sean later. He's like, what the fuck, dude? You guys are doing calves now in snow and all this shit. You know, it's just like skateboarding all over again. It's, it's so early in snowboarding that going fakie or whatever was like a new step in snowboarding. And, it was just a, a new progression, I guess, but it's crazy that they weren't doing it before. I'm sure they were, though, those, you know, Terry and all those guys, but I think we started doing different tricks. Yeah, I think, well, I don't know, Mikey was pretty on top of everything. He probably brought it to me first, to be honest. Who was my favorite snowboarder? I would say, you know, it was back in that time. It was, it was Roach, for sure. I mean, he was definitely between Roach and, and Ranquit because those are two guys that were, you know, that both skated and... As far as like doing tricks and things, you know, they were they were grabbing and holding longer than anybody else. It was insane, you know, to see that coming from, like, you know, we had never really done any, you know, we didn't we weren't doing like half cabs and all that stuff. We were kind of just doing these weird like kick out things off moguls. And then I remember I was at the U.S. Open in 1990 or no 89, and we were riding up the gondola at Stratton, and I looked down and it was like it was Roach. Ranquit, Keith Wallace, Tucker Franzen, and some other random dudes that were from like top, like maybe Monty, Chris's brother, were all riding under the gondola, like just, you know, half cabbing off the knolls. And we were just like, what? Like, what? We'd never seen that before. And that's all we tried to do after that day was like imitate that, you know? Yeah, we just started doing um, like out of the end of the pipe in Breckenridge and at the US Open that year. Just, you know, switch tricks, basically, what is now switch tricks, you know? But it was only me and Roach. It wasn't like a couple other people. It was like, maybe Duck Boy was in there, but, you know, he was way more into, like, the pipe. Whereas I, I started to look at the whole mountain. Like, Roachy and I, we, we were always, like, we felt like we were the, uh, the only ones, you know, carrying the flag of kind of the skateboarding, you know? And then just having Noah, then Cardiel, come, kind of come on board you know it would like help legitimize it in skating too because up to that point I I wouldn't even really admit I was a snowboarder you know amongst certain circles it, it might come out but then like okay not all snowboarders are gay by birth you know so it's at that time it was like I won't name names but just goofy outfits gesture gesture hats and you know so might, might as well have been juggling up there or something you know like neon and and it was just it was bad, you know? I don't know, because I wasn't really, I wasn't a skier, and, and, and that wasn't my background, and I don't know where all the day glow came from, you know, Wave Rave didn't help that situation, but it just didn't fit with me and, and who I, where I was, I mean, I, I mean, black looked better on snow than 
than bright yellow did, you know, and that was more my attitude and how I felt. And but I think a lot of guys make good money off wearing day clothes. <laughs> Damien did very well for himself, so whatever, that's good for him. <laughs> There's plenty of guys that would wear the day glow, so there there was no shortage of that. <laughs> oh, but just his fashion at the time too was pretty sick, like with those big like I don't know if they were like Oakley frog skins or something, like rainbow tint and like big bleached hair and, and like all grown out and stuff and just the way he even talked to like was so like snowboard speak like do some do some pokes in the pipe I don't know Brush used to talk like that too but it's just like I don't know it's pretty sick his whole his whole everything <laughs> and I don't know if you guys know this, but I think it was like Tucker Franson and Chris Roach who actually the the traditional method air is when you pull it out and you poke your your leg way out. That traditionally that was called the grasser, and that was because of Chris Roach and Tucker Franson, the grasser. I coined it up here because we we a lot of my friends, were, you know, we're all from Grass Valley here, and like I said, Sean and and Terry did the best backside airs known to man, and. So we all did them mimicking those two guys, and we called it the grasser because, you know, everybody from Grass Valley had to do it like those guys. So, you know, now it's like the grasser, you know. You know who knows how to do a backside air and, 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 and who doesn't. I mean, even to this day, you can see someone do a, a, a fucking method air, and I wouldn't call it a, a, a backside air or a grasser either way. I mean, that's, that's the, one of the good things is if you have to explain it, then you don't, you know, you're not doing it. So either you know you're doing it right or you're not. <laughs> you do it whatever feels good. If the method feels good, so be it. And thanks for not doing the grasser. <laughs> Jamie does grassers. <laughs> he knows the feelings. You know, when I'm in Tahoe, I'm doing grassers. Any place else, I'm kicking out a method. Those guys grew up watching Kidwell at the Tahoe Donner quarter pipe kicking out killer skate methods, you know, and, and they were the generation kind of just a nick before I was. So, you know, Roach had one of the sickest grassers ever. He was a big influence, you know. He probably doesn't get as much credit as he deserves for being influential on a backside method. Grasser. Uh, Thanks, Chris. My favorite trick right now is grasser reverts. Made it up. I don't know. No one else does it. It's pretty how, cool. It's how fun. does it work? Then you go backside wall to a grasser and then keep rotating it. Over rotate it, land fakie. It's pretty cool. Indie poke to fakies, over rotate was good too. Yeah, grasser reverts. I made them up. No one's doing them but me or something like that, which is. I don't know, like it's, I didn't even notice it back then, but if it seems like if somebody said something like that now, they'd just be so crucified by everyone else. Like what a clamor, you know what I mean? So it's kind of, it's funny because I just watched that not too long ago and I was laughing so hard about what he was saying about that. It was pretty sick. <laughs> uh, we were filming uh, for Doggers movies up in Mount Hood and Doggers are the kind of guys like, yeah, that's pretty sick, but I know you got more in you. You know, you got to start bringing that thing around or do something else. And I was like, well, dude, what about backside 360s? You know, we'll do grass and turn it around. And he's like, do it, do it. <laughs> you know, so that's when it started up in Mount Hood. And during the summer, we started doing those. I think I was the only one doing them that day. You know, obviously knowing all those guys started doing them right away too. But I think Dogger pushed me into doing them that day. It was good when, when Santa Cruz called and said they were going to make uh, snowboards. I was super excited. Joel Gomez was the team manager. Uh, me, Mike Rankwit, and John Cardiel were the first riders. And to me, that was an all-time team. I was so excited to have that as a team. And, and I remember telling Joel, I was like, man, whatever we do, we got to keep this team together. This is, a, this is a great, great team for this time in the sport. There's not that much skateboard influence and we could take this long way and it fell apart right away. Santa Cruz just didn't have the money or didn't want to pay the, those boys what they needed to make and and you know I stayed and was happy to stay but I sure would have liked to have them on, as teammates for a couple more years or whatever. I rode for Sessions at the time and so so did Roach and he like Sessions didn't even make clothes then. It was like the cool shop sponsor to have and um, Santa Cruz hired Joel as a team manager 
And yeah, so it just made sense. Santa Cruz Snowboards, you know, sponsor Roach and Ranquit, you know? And that to us was so cool because Santa Cruz was so cool back then, but their snowboard division got taken over by the Europeans. And all of a sudden the snowboarding side of Santa Cruz wasn't as cool as we thought it would be, you know? So we're not dealing with NHS, like independent trucks, Santa Cruz skateboards. We're not dealing with that. We're dealing with some, you know, hotshot racer guys from Europe, you know? And so when we got kicked out of Japan, that, that was over the top for them. They were just like, you know, fuck that. Easter man. Ted Martin, is that the guy? No way. Yeah, so Rankwood and Roach were pretty much the, the, the shit stirs. They were the worst. I mean, that, the, they're the two guys kicked out of Japan, and they were together just like bad news. Uh, a food fight happened in an area that shouldn't have happened, and uh, and, and it was stupid. They were just they were just drunk and being dumb. But uh, it wasn't like they got their hands slapped. They basically got kicked off the property, kicked out of Japan, and sent home. <laughs> yeah, the Japanese had, had a little different uh, uh, understanding of what is, should be appropriate or not appropriate behavior. They were pretty serious over there, and, and it's funny how they can kick you out of their country. You know, like around here, they might put you in jail or give you a ticket, but they uh, they rounded them up and actually escorted them to the airport and got them on a plane and said, see ya. You gotta film getting on the bus, dude. You gotta walk out, Mike. The battery is really bad. Hold your pride. Where's Rose, bro? Oh. The rubber frog incident, bro. We're gonna miss you. Bye, guys. I love you. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. <laughs> and it wasn't d any part you know, due to anything Joel did or said, he was just the messenger, you know what I mean? He felt bad for both sides because he saw that you could capitalize on these kids, but he also saw that in their eyes, we, f we blew it, you know, 100%. We got kicked off the World Cup tour forever. You know, we got kicked out of Japan. And I also knew, and I, I tried to tell Chris at the time, like, Santa Cruz ain't gonna back you. You know, they're not at all. They're gonna, they're gonna brush you under the rug, you know? And they did, and, but Roach just, out of pride, you know, just like NorCal, dude, you know, <laughs> like Santa Cruz, you know, and I, I wish I could still feel that then because I, I kind of did only because of the camaraderie of Roach and I, but the other thing was I found I could hang out with Roach more because at the end of Santa Cruz, they didn't want us hanging out together. They wouldn't put us on trips together, you know what I mean? Like, and all of a sudden I was like, killer, I can go hang out with Roach, you know, there's no weird binding thing. and. But it was just kind of like too bad to watch Roach at the height of his riding and kind of image just get, you know, just get a wet blanket put over him by his sponsor. You know, they gave him a pro model, but they didn't promote it. You know what I mean? So Roach probably sold one board for every five of mine, which then Noah sold probably 10 for every one of mine. You know what I mean? So me and Noah had these successful pro models and Ro Roach's was successful, but it, it just, they didn't promote it, you know, when it, it's like a band having a record contract and then all of a sudden the record company ain't going to promote their record. It, it's going to sell, but not as well as with advertising, blah, blah, blah. You know, I kind of went full circle and now I have another model with them and, and I get to still, you know, be involved in Santa Cruz. So Santa Cruz definitely has given me a, a good life and, and they've always been behind me and, and I appreciate that. After the Japan incident where we both got kicked out, you know, um, I went back to Japan the next year, you know, he never went back, but he was fine with that. He was cool, just not trout. He just didn't care, you know. He was like, dude, I just want to kick it at home in Tahoe, go to Grass Valley, smoke pot, you know, like, that's pretty funny. This guy's got the opportunity to go anywhere in the world. He's like, you know, <laughs> like, yawn. If you were a professional snowboarder and you got to just do videos, I think that in itself was a statement. You know, you didn't have to deal with the pressure of contests and you didn't have to, you know, go to all the, the shitty resorts and, uh, you know, spend your time doing that. You could chase the snow and the weather and, and be, with your, be with your friends in, in that atmosphere. And it was obviously a lot funner, you know, and there's always pressure trying to get footage and stuff, but it's a different kind of pressure and it's, you know, more enjoyable. And, I think Montana was one of my funnest ones with Ranquit and, and Graham and probably Sione too, yeah. Just the snow was so good. It snowed so much up there in Big Sky, Montana. That was a super fun trip. And I don't remember 
too much of any of those. Just I don't remember any of my own highlights in any of the movies. <laughs> You know, you were watching people's whole season, you know, they were hour, hour and a half long movies, you know. What I remember more than anything is getting a Santa Cruz towel, riding down the hill, and in those days you just emulated in your head, you thought, okay, I'm basically this guy this run, you know. And him and Noah and people like that were those guys for me a lot of times. I remember, of course, his, you know, his broken leg and critical condition and, you know, all that stuff. And, yeah, we were at uh, Snowbird, and uh, there's a, a blind little drop, and Tucker went off at first, and I, and I yelled at him, how fast? He goes, as fast as you want. And he's like, all right, cool. Not that it's Tucker's fault by any means, but um, we were setting up, and, and I just went off it, I guess, too fast and jumped right into little trees and hooked up into them and just started ragdolling head over and stopped, and my femur got wrapped around a tree and broke, and sat in the fucking snow for probably an hour or whatever because we were out of bounds and with my shirt up and snow down my back and got dragged out of there and waited for the helicopter that morphine was in the morphine kicked in i was all right took the helicopter ride into the hospital and the hospital treated me really well for a few weeks till i flew home and got healed up and two months two and a half months into it i went to chile with dave sioni just to see and noah Slaznik to see how my knee was or my uh, femur and the only thing that hurt was my knee where they tied that rod to my knee and I was stoked to be back on the snow two and a half months after that. What's up dude? We're in Chile, we're having fun. Everyone's getting paid for it. There's a lot of nice girls coming from different countries. Oh, okay, okay, stop. Portillo's in Chile and uh, yeah, I went there with I think the same guys I went, Noah and, uh, and Dave Sione and, and Sean Farmer. <laughs> that was just the funnest trip. You, you know, you you go up there in the summer, it's like Tahoe weather. It snowed for probably three days and it was probably 60 degrees during the during the day. And then it's like a little resort for maybe the Brazilian people to come down or whoever comes down and, and spends their summer times or whatever. So it's a nightlife thing too. You don't have to leave the mountain. You can, you know, everything's right there at the, at the resort. It's Joe glad you're going so they can't really see my moves. I don't know, man. I I I found one little troll thing, and I think Noah got had some fun with maybe one other one, and you know the girls. I get we couldn't speak their language; they couldn't speak ours, so it was kind of one of those fun things, you know. You just mess around. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Oh, I think we're in uh, Colorado, one of those mountains, just because Colorado says, you know, they think they have the best mountains, but th there's nothing there. You just, it's just all fucking ski slopes. So you stay inbounds and there's nothing else to do there besides, you know, do blunt slides and shit. So we did those for a week and learned how to press the board <laughs> up shitty hill and trying to progress snowboarding. What can we have fun doing? <laughs> you know, <laughs> nothing to jump and nothing to do. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't like. To, I don't. I don't know. Whatever. You know, it is. <laughs> it just. You know, just. I guess having fun, man, and riding sideways. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't do anything for anybody, and I didn't give it. I. I don't know. If I did something for for younger kids, you know, and I like to give my boards away as well at contests, and 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 that was it. I, you know, I didn't try to snowboard for anybody or or any other reasons than for me, and and, and if I help people enjoy it more, then that's cool, but nothing more than that, you know. <laughs> I wouldn't change anything I ever did. I mean, shit, I went through my snowboarding curve, you know, pretty much, you know, just partying and having fun. I mean, snowboarding was on the back burner almost to me, and that's unfortunate, but that's the way it was. <laughs> well, you know, you do what you can, but you know what I mean? I mean, you would do this shit, you know, a little smarter, maybe put some a little bit more money in the bank and shit, but, but you know, I mean, what do you do? You know, you're out getting paid to, to travel the world and ride ski lifts. I mean, that's incredible. That's just, I mean, who doesn't dream about that kind of shit? You know, that's insane.